Ho ho, my heart is a very, very good evening to you. It's just me, Scotty McClue, and we're popping up on Friday night at 10 o'clock shot. 10 o'clock right now, and a very, very warm welcome to our evening phone in, of course. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Tregs. Good to have you with us. And dinky do. Welcome to our evening phone in. One hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment for not just one nation but for all the nations of the world. So you're very, very welcome here. Good evening, Scotty. How are you, Robert? We are amazing. Lovely to have you with us. And a very warm welcome to you. Fantastic. Just amazing. Good evening, everyone. Dinky Doo from Scotty McClure. And Dinky Doo says, Karim. Thank you, Karim. Lovely to have you with us. Good evening, you big handsome chap. Oh, Susie, babe. You are so very, very kind to me. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's very, very good of you. Now then, we have a lot to get through tonight, so to your telephones in a few minutes' time, and let's get the chit-chat going. I haven't opened the lines because they go absolutely bananas, and uh, we like to see what is what. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. We're live on TikTok right now, one of the world's top streaming platforms. We're live on YouTube right now, one of the world's top streaming platforms. We're live on Twitch, one of the world's top streaming platforms. And I saw some movement. Twitch is relatively new uh, to Scotty McClue. And I saw some movement. So if you like to be watching at Scotty underscore McClue, that would be just amazing. I'll see if I can get that up while we're talking on some of the captions along the bottom there. We'll get that up for you. Dinky do, Scotty, says Professor Numpty Heat. Evening, Scotty and all, says the wonderful Kareem. And that is us on the move. Now then, we're only a couple of minutes into the program. Uh, and a, two things I would like to discuss with all the old fun games happening, Hearts and Hibs and Rangers and Celtic. How can we ensure that there is no rivalry off the pitch and with the supporters? And how can we ensure that there are no drunks and that there is no fighting? That's what we need to go. How can we get the message across? They are both exactly, exactly the same religion. So there we are. Good evening, McClue. Happy Friday. Jordan, how lovely to have you with us. DJ Mac Dinky Do. You're looking fresh, as Scotty. I thank you, Derek and Clive, and welcome to your good self. Uh, so there we are. Now then, uh, lots of lovely presents from Kareem, tennis balls, roses, TikToks, all these lovely, lovely gifts. Very, very kind of you, Kareem. And I thank you. I say to you. Now, I think I'll open the phones right now. There we are. And uh, if anybody wants to come on, they can give us a call uh, as soon as they like. So that should be the phone lines open now with a bit of luck. Uh, Ellis Stinky Do. Fantastic. Oh, here we go. Uh, good evening. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Thank you, Scotty. Ah, Kareem Dinky Do. Uh, Kareem, you might seem strange me asking all the time, but it's part of a requirement, if you like. When you're running a talk show, you say to them, Good evening, you're live on Scotty's phone in, because you don't want somebody to say, oh, I, I didn't know I was live. I thought I was just talking to you. You get people as daft as that, you know what I mean? Yes. So, no, no, it's all Scotty. It's all part of the game. So that's that's, uh, that's all part of it. So I, I, I just have a standard, good evening, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who is that? And if somebody gives me the first name, then we're off. Good. We're set to go. We're set uh, to go. Afternoon since I called this morning. I've painted the whole back garden, so I oh, am knackered. And well, I'll tell you, the weather's quite good for that because it's not yeah. one thing or another. It's not damp. It's not too cold. It's not too yeah. hot. And if you've been painting, that's very, yeah. very good because the sun tends to dry the oil out the paint, you know? Well, it was a fence and I have a, like a paint gun, so. Uh, it took me. Well, it took a couple of hours to do, but I didn't uh -huh. rush it. But I would have nowhere. I would have took hours upon hours if I'd done it by hand. If you'd done it by hand, uh, they're very good. These things, all the modern yeah. tools, marvelous. Now then, yeah. uh, thoroughly enjoyed our chat this morning. In fact, I've uploaded it. Kareem, the cars. Ah, lovely. 
Because right. uh, people, I think people, and it took a wee while to process. So I think probably the powers that be would be wondering, what on earth is all this about? <laughs> Like, and actually, and I know I've seen the car before, probably as a wee boy or, you know, like on TV or something. So I, I do know the cars there. And, and is that the Rover Scream? No. The, 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 oh, the, the Morris, Morris, the, the Morris car. 1000. Yes. Oh, you would know it. You'd recognize it. There was absolutely, yeah. you know, probably millions of them. I don't know how many they made, but several uh, hundred thousand, I would think. Uh, you know, uh, and, yeah. um, and of course... Um, Austin and uh, you had Longbridge, you see. A lot of it was in the Midlands, Birmingham and round about there. And the Rover Company was Solly Hull. Uh, so, so the Rover Company was at Solly Hull. And after the Second World War, uh, they couldn't get steel, you see, these things, because of all the, uh, it had all been used to make bombers and fighters and what have you, and uh, and build battleships. So you couldn't get steel, so they used aluminium, and that was the start of the Land Rover. Right, okay. Yep, yeah. and some of the um, the boots and the bonnets in the Rover 100 range, they were aluminium uh, as well, so it was quite good because they didn't rust. See, the Land Rover and Range Rover, they're two different companies, yes? No, uh, they were the uh, same. Uh, they, they were all the Rover company of Solly Hull. Uh, so right. that was it. Very famous, the Rover Company, Sully Hull. And then right. um, the what happened was, after the Land Rover, they wanted to expand their range a little bit and uh -huh. uh, bring something for maybe the state owners because the Land Rovers were very, very practical, but quite sort of um, what can I say? Quite coarse to drive. Uh, okay. So you couldn't sort of said, I think I'll take uh, the missus out in the Land Rover tonight, you know, that sort yeah. of idea. But they had Rover right. engines. The petrol ones had Rover engines, and most of the right. diesels had Perkins diesels. But you can put all sorts of engines in a Land yeah. Rover that's a very flexible vehicle. But uh, right. they, that was when they brought out the first Range Rovers, I think in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. And right. um, but they were quite agricultural. It was mainly farmers and estate owners and things that had them. You didn't have them uh, figuring up the central aisle of the supermarket like they do now, you know. <laughs> the way I, I view it so nowadays, I think if I can tell the difference between them, one of them looks very uh, like cars, very posh looking, and the other one is quite square. Um, yeah, that's right. Boxy, bulky. Well, they've just brought a new one out because they were worried about some of the safety aspects of a design that was yeah. about, well, let's just see how old it is, 74 years old. So I would imagine wow. you'll be celebrating uh, Land Rover 75 within the next year or so. What about, and I could be wrong with this, is it British or American, if you remember the make, Saab? Saab, Saab Swedish. Swedish, right. Saab okay. Swedish, right. Saab and Volvo are the big Swedish cars. And right. both of them absolutely first-class motor cars. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, designed to operate in sub-zero temperatures, what have you. Uh, and Saab was beautifully engineered because they actually built fighter jets. Uh, they were yeah, aircraft. Yeah. Saab were aircraft builders. And then they right. went into building motor cars. I would love to try, uh, you know, you can test drive cars. I would love to try uh, a Volvo just to see what they're like. Well, I would, I would certainly go and uh, and uh, just speak to the dealer and say, can I get a drive of this? Because they were yeah. very, very good. I mean, you know, they were really tough, big motors, uh, the likes yeah. of uh, the 122, and then you had the 144, and then you had the 244, and it just went on like that, and the 460 and what have you, um, and it yeah. developed the range, but they were always beautiful well-engineered, well-made big motor cars. And I think yeah. you've got Volvos going away back to the 30s and 40s. Wow, right, okay. Yeah. Nice. Right. In Sweden. Oh, Scotty, what, my wee quick question for tonight was, um, and you've probably read about it, uh, in Wales just now it's uh, being tested or piloted within some primary and secondary schools. Uh, and I'll tell you in a second, but they're they're talking about it. That well, the, the Tories, the Scottish Tories, 
uh, want to introduce in Scotland. And what they're wanting is the school day to be increased. So let's just say from nine o'clock to five o'clock mm -hmm. uh, to make up for lost time mm -hmm. in the past. Um, what do you think? What's your views on that? I know my well, I, mean, I, think, I think some of the Scottish Tories that want this should actually, um, you know, get themselves qualified and go teaching. Mm -hmm. And then, and then they can see how good they are with that because the children already, I would say, a school day, the children are like little wound up springs by, you know, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I think, yeah. uh, I think another hour you would see some serious problems coming out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's uh, obviously if they're going to increase teaching salaries, um, you know, the teachers always look at things, but I can't see that going down terribly well. You see, education, you've got to be very careful that the finest yeah. education in the world, i.e. Scottish education, doesn't become a political football. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it should almost be ring-fenced from politicians. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. say, no, no, you yeah. can't touch that. You can do this, that, and the next thing. You can move things about, but you can't interfere with the school day, with salaries, all that sort yeah. of stuff. You know, yeah. that comes from the central civil service. That's the kind of way it should be. Yeah. You know? I know professional teachers, part, they have to do so much work before they qualify. And I know one of them is that they have to shadow a pupil for the day. Mm -hmm. And when you speak to any probation, I went through it myself, you are knackered, absolutely drained yes. at the end of the day. Yes. So if you can imagine adding on an extra hour and a half, two hours to the day, uh, you know, I think the kids, uh, it, it will, as you said, it will cause more damage. You're not getting effective learning and teaching. Um, if they cut it, like what they're trialing, what is it, four days out of, a, out of seven that they're trying to do for certain jobs up and down the country? Um, possibly, I don't know, but again, I can't see that happening. I, I would Why think, I'll be absolutely happen. honest with you, Kareem, I would think if any politician interfering in education wants to see an exodus of teachers and is willing uh, to put their name to that, you know, to say this is the 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 McWhackle agreement and um, and see the exodus of teachers and take the full brunt of that then they should they should look at it that way but they yeah. need to come up and say no it's it's McWhackle and they've decided that they should extend the school day blah 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 that there won't be an increase in pay and if they're happy to preside over a huge exodus of teaching staff then so be it you know mm -hmm. well I think I think there'll be strikes. The, the, the unions won't stand for that. I think the teachers mm -hmm. as well. They're talking about uh, tackling bureaucracy. That's just going to increase the, the paperwork. You see, what, what the pandemic has done is let people see that remote learning for young people is not suitable. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, can, it can help in cases like a stop gap but uh, it is not suitable. And uh, there was an experiment done about jobs that a computer could do. And I think they found that even waiting with food, you could reduce that down and there was something like 80, 90%. They could you know, get machines to serve you and to heat the food and blah, blah, blah. When it came to teaching, the highest they could reach was 4% without teachers, 4%. So in other words, so if you're wanting to have um, uneducated, feral young people, a generation of them, and you're wanting to lose substantial amounts of teaching staff, which uh, would never be replaced, then put your name to it as a politician, call it your report, and, um, and see how you go. Hopefully that won't be the case up here, Scotty. That it'll be because I just think it will cause so much issues. But you're so right about the the distant learning. I think you can have it to a certain extent, but yep. when you're when you're pushing it all the time, no, um, it's I, it's it it doesn't work. And even yeah. with the, the 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 best will in the world with the parents, yep. um, yep. you know, doing their bit, the parents don't necessarily know about the young person's work. Correct. Yeah. You know, so it's not as if even the parents can be roped in as substitute teachers, and very yeah. often both parents are working, or if it's a yes. single parent, then they're working. Yeah, 
you know, because they have to try and make an attempt to survive under the present uh, the present situation, and it's going to get tougher. I'm I'm laughing here. I've got Dave Deprave on, and he's slagging you off, saying you're an insomnia cure. Uh, Karine is so boring, dude. Uh, all this now, Dave is so jealous of you and of your intelligence. It's such a shame because anybody of any intelligence would never even dream of making that comment. And even the fact the word boring, any intelligent person is never bored. Well, I would challenge Dave then to come and phone you. Phone and in. Let's have a conversation. Yes, and let's see just where his head's at. I have a fair idea, but I'm not going to say on here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking my call. An absolute uh, privilege as always. Have a great night. Yes, and thanks for raising that very interesting subject, Kareem. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank there you. we are. That's our Kareem. What a great guy. So, Dave, give us a call and uh, let's see what you are talking about. That's fantastic. Now, what have we got here? We have problems here in New Zealand. All the teachers are leaving. Oh, my goodness me. Well, we don't want that spreading throughout the world, do we? You're live in Scottish phone in. Who's that? It's Pablo for the second time in two days. Ah, uh, excellent, day. excellent news, Pablo. A very warm welcome to you, Lala. Thank you very much. You keep me going, Scotty, with these shows. You keep me going. <laughs> well, never a dull moment, do you know what I mean? The thing is, Scotty, I think... Um, I was saying it to me, Mrs. When I was watching you a while ago, it was like I had something going that it was uh, something to break away from. Yeah. Because with me, I've got I've got one of the personalities. Uh, you know, I've got to be doing something, or my mind runs miles, and then I get distracted to do stupid stuff like maybe even have a bet and gamble. But when I was doing when I was doing little things like watching your show, breaking up with something else or something else. I was in a far better place, so I said I need to get back on that program, the Scottie Bear Clue program. Good. Good, because this is far better. I mean, the reason you wonder what you can be up to is because you've got a brilliant mind, and, uh, you know, it needs to be occupied, and a good old chit-chat with you and I is uh, is a start. It is, Scotty. You'd be surprised where, where the mind can run and lead to when it's not feeling like it's, uh, what's the word for it? Entertained yes, I mean, information, yeah. education, entertainment, it doesn't have to be taken seriously. And, uh, yeah. you know, we're quite lighthearted on here about so many things. That's why I'm not interested in too much pandemic, too much Brexit or yeah. too much war. Yeah, because I mean, like you say, that's in the mainstream media and it's quite repetitive as well. You, you stay, it starts one day, it lasts for months, maybe years on end sometimes. It's not never out of the media so it's nice to break away from that and just have day-to-day -to -day topics what's happening in someone's life what they're seeing what they've heard it yeah. just breaks all that up Scott. stuff that's important to real people you know yeah i i disagree with having a longer school day says elizabeth uh, it means that the mental health of students will be worse mm. Mm. I don't know. I think we're putting too much pressure on him. I think, I think even the school times that they wake up and go to, have to go to school should be looked at. I mean, yeah, I can understand the programming, the pro programming behind it, you know, get them into a routine that when they go to work, this is what happens. You get up early, you go to work, and you come home late. I think that's what we need to look at. I mean, whether that gets it extended from 9 to 10, 10 a.m., I don't know, but I'd like to look at them kind of hours because there's nothing worse as a parent trying to wake your kid up in the cold winter months when we should be hibernating. Oh, like absolutely. I mean, I, I, I really take my bonnet off to all the young people for arriving on time at school in a winter's day. Yeah. You know, especially when there's snow on the ground, etc., etc. And it's still dark out there, potential, you know, risks and dangers. Yeah, and I don't know about this moving the times about. We need to have a look at that and see what's what. I'm not sure we're even needing the British right. summer time. Well, I don't know, Scott. I mean, they talk about footballers. Footballers get paid all this money, but they're still whinging. They need a winter break. They shouldn't be playing in the winter. But look at the the kids. The kids, the kids could do with a little bit of break, not just in the summer. What's that? Yeah, about? well, winter's traditionally, football's traditionally a winter game, is it not? No, not really. 
in, in the European leagues, like the Italian league, they have like a two, three week uh, winter break over in England. They're playing on New Year's Day, Boxing Day, so, you know, yeah. a massive thing over there. Murray so, says, my old father used to say, if you're not in bed by midnight, get home. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sorry, there's some great well, chats here. There's the sorry. wonderful Susan. I think everyone should be able to work flexible hours, says the wonderful Susan Forrest. Maybe they should introduce flexible hours for teachers and recruit more teachers. I'm heading to my bed, Scotty. I can remember when I used to be going out at this time. Those were the days when I liked to be in bed for 3 a.m. And if I wasn't, I just went home. Ha <laughs> ha, that's fantastic. I think Murray was responding to Gordon there. I'm good, my head's getting better. So there we are, just a slight banging, says Martin. Uh, Dave Deprave was supposed to be lifetime banned. Well, Ebri, we thought we'd give him another chance because obviously this is going to help his mental state if he can listen to Kareem talking to Scotty McClure. Well, Scott, going back on what you said about extending the hours, this wasn't the topic I wanted to speak about. Well, a few weeks Brilliant. ago, I was, going to phone up. I was going to phone up and say, I think the teachers these days are too soft and they don't know how to discipline. And I say this because my partner's daughter was playing up a little bit in school. She shouldn't have, but we was getting telephone call after telephone call. And most of it, Scott, it should have been dealt and addressed with by the school. You know, as a parent's job, it's your job to discipline your child at home, get him in school and carry that ethica into, into school. But sometimes the teachers need to intervene. And, and it's like, at the moment, the teachers are not like they were 20 years ago. It's like they're soft and they're my main priority. Well, I, I have to take issues with you there because the teacher's mm. hands are very tied now. And... Mm. Um, a, you know, a teacher can't touch a child and a child can't touch a teacher at all, mm -hmm. right? So that's that. So, there, I mean, we used to get a slap across the head if we cheeked up, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of idea, get your hair pulled, get the duster yeah. thrown at you, all that. Now, that wasn't good. And the belt yeah. and the cane and all these things at school, that wasn't good either. But relationships with parents and schools are much, much, much healthier. But the teachers are certainly not being soft. The children are very often out of control. And the teachers have an, ele an element of loco parentis, which, as you'll know, is Latin for in the place of the parents. So, you know, but the teachers don't just have one child in front of them. They have 28 children in front of them. And, uh, you know, a number of these children could be very difficult. Exactly, yeah. You see? And that's, that's why it's such a challenge. And that's why brilliant people who are excellent teachers very often just walk out of the profession because the children just cannot learn respect. Well, Scott, what do you think then? Instead of taking taking kids out and putting them in, they used to call it academic removing. My, I don't know what it's called now. So what I think you it's uh, I think it's exclusion. No, 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 no exclusion. If you was not in school, we had a separate room you get sent to called academic remove. Oh right. And basically, basically, it was like a detention center, and you would stay there all day. But is it, what do you think about then having more more eyes in the class? Like I know you have teaching assistants. But like you're saying, for one person to look after 28 teenagers, yeah, what about having more eyes on the class, classroom? Well, I've, I've always thought an absolute luxury would be that in a class you have the teacher and you might have an extra grammarian, you have somebody that does marking and you have somebody that is a disciplinarian. And they go around the class, the teacher then starts teaching, the disciplinarian can go around and say, right, you out the class, you come with me, you sit up and behave. You know? I mean, a lot of schools now have got cops in the school. The, camp, the campus cop, you know what I mean, for dealing with anything yeah. that might be an IT-related crime, that might be uh, bullying through the internet, that might be drugs-related, etc., etc., that might be looking after a child who has criminal tendencies uh, at the weekend, and the campus cop can keep an eye on them, see what's going on. Well, to be honest, Scott, 
some of the schools are also could look like prisons. And I don't know if that's just for the security of the children, which is most paramount, but they do have that element. I mean, look at the fences that are high to get in there. Well, you have to have that, and you have to have the school locked up because you don't want yeah. any dodgy characters getting in. No, especially with what happened years ago with, you know, schools being shot out, but shot up by lunatics. So I think, I think you know, you do have an element of looking like a prison, but the security, again, is paramount. And the first school that had a police officer in Salford was Beulil High School, Scotty. Well, we mustn't, we, we don't want to mention names. Right, right. Well, anyway, it was one of the first schools in Salford, and this was about 20 years ago. Yeah. They had the first police officer, and that was just basic checks where, you know, checks scanning for anything like a weapon, things like that. Yeah, and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Well, we're not going, to, as I say, we're not going to any specifics, yeah, Pablo. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. But anyway, Scotty, I want to get on the top, topic of self-checkouts and why I can't stand them. Uh, of what? Sorry, self-checkouts? Yeah, you know self-checkouts? Yeah, self -checkouts. yeah, go on. Right. Every time I look at a self-checkout, I look at a person who could be, you know, in work, out of work. And when they first rolled them in, having one was in, a, in a store wasn't such a bad idea. But my experience I had about four weeks ago left me fuming and scratching my head. I'm going into the shopping market and there's one person on a till. There's two other tills that are empty. So I'm ready to put my stuff on the conveyor belt and said, sorry, the, the, the guy said, sorry, it's, uh, it's shut now. So I said, well, you're closing. He said, okay. I turned around and said, is anybody opening these two conveyor belts? No, they're closed too. I'm like, okay, what, what world are we living in? I've seen these conveyor belts having queues, massive queues in. And I got into a bit of an, an argument or a debate with a woman that worked there. She said, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. You know, so I said, no, I'm not saying it's your fault. But as a human being watching this and not saying anything about it, it's leaving me puzzled. puzzled. I said, I'm not, I'm not willing to go to a self-checkout, even for one item, for two reasons. One, I don't work for your company. When I come into your company, I want my social services. Not just yeah, my yeah I always like services. to go to a human being. No, well, that's it, Scotty. And what else it does? It, you think about depression, right? D depression is rife. Everyone does their conversating by social media. Now you've got self-checkouts. So that communication between a person, even, even if it's so little as, hello, how was your day? You know what I mean? That's being lost as well. Yeah, it? yeah. No, we need to get back to that. I think that's very important, Pablo. Excellent. And also, um, I uh, the self-service, fine if it's just one item, but I find that the assistant is over more often than not for almost every single item uh, when, yeah. when when I'm doing that. So it's, it's not the part. And that sounds to me like just poor shift management that you were experiencing there because there could be some disagreeing. Right, uh, would you all like to go to this still here now, please? Thank you. Well, that's it, Scott. It's like we've got very, we've got very lazy, you know. When I turned around and said to the woman, she served me in the end. I said, listen, love, I wasn't having a go at you. I said, but at the end of the day, if I just stand there and leave these machines to do the work, I said, we'll be like a communist country one day when you walk into the shop It'll scan your face, you go in, you go through another door, it'll scan your other face. So now there's no need for anybody at, at the till. Yep. There's, no need for, there's no need for security guards anymore. Because if you rob something, it already scanned your face, you ain't getting out the, the doors. And this is, this is what they're doing. Anyway, well, I think they'll the want that. I mean, I think at some oh, point yeah. they'll want us all chipped and things like that. And irises in your eye and all sorts oh. of things. Pablo, I'm going to have to dash. I've just realized the time. Lovely to hear you. Top man, dinky do la la. Good points. So there we are. That's our Pablo. Now then, uh, teachers and police are more like social workers now, says Tad. So there we are. It's not funny uh, to the children have gone mad. It's you, the adults. You're not giving the kids the correct upbringing. The adults are to blame. Children learn from their parents. Susan says, did you enjoy your night out with the girls? Jerry, they're having a conversation. Who have we got here? You're live on Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello, 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 Scottish Martin. Hello, uh, Martin. How are you doing, La? You think you do? Yes, I am. Um, I, um, I had a really fucking headache today. 
Oh. Oh. Well, I hope that's not because you've done too much DJing. Remember, I told you about your hearing. I know, I know. And um, Jake Highroad is up to, the guy started uploading again, so he's up to 401 now. So oh, wow. So you're going to you're gonna be doing some binge watching of Take the High Road. I know, but um, Kareem told me today um, that Take the High Road is a fantastic show to watch. Um, it is. It's wonderful. It's a lovely piece of drama. STV was just a great place to work. I loved it. It's, um, it's um, been a very interesting night due to all the talking about um, PM, 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 pieces and that. Yes. But, uh, very, very, interesting. very interesting, very interesting chat. Do you know what I mean? What I'm finding, to be honest with you, Martin, is these shows are just getting more and more interesting all the time. Yes, I know, I know, I know, but I know, I know. You know, and, and, and I think what's happening, we're attracting some very, very interesting people. Yes, I know. So, mm -hmm. so like as well, you have the odd troll who, who likes to make you feel like you're in sucking up your nose and all that stuff. The odd half-witted idiot, yeah, but they don't last very long. They're down the swanee so quickly. I know, I know, I know, I know. So there we have it. Uh, there's uh, Roxy. A little conversation goes a long way when you live with mental health issues. So there you have it. Um, hello it's from okay. Paisley. Yes. See when, see when you start going back to work on Tuesday, um, when are you going to start coming back on again? Are you going to Well, we'll maybe look day? at, we'll maybe look at something like, I don't know, maybe a Monday, Wednesday and Friday at night. That is in what me and Kim discussed today. Um, we were discussing that the day through Facebook. We were discussing that. We, we were saying that you can't do it like for a few weeks straight because like you both said together, we, you don't want to burn, burn yourself you out. Don't, you don't want to burn out because, you see, you've got and, to remember, if you're up at six well, in the morning. And as well, uh, and, as, and as well, have the odd phone and don't have a phone call on it all the time. Like have, like have one day for chatting, one day for phoning, and another day chatting. It's up to you to see how you feel. For, 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 for example, Monday have a phone in, Wednesday break, Thursday break, like Charlie, Saturday's normally a phone in as well. Saturday's the phone in, and it's nine o'clock. But we've enjoyed these weeknights at ten. Ah, oh, I know. You know they're 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 very popular, very quickly. Oh. But but um, but how are you feeling about continue doing that? Well, we um, just we can't we can't obviously do the mornings, so they'll be out from next week. But we can look oh. at doing doing some of the evenings and uh, see how we go. I mean, what I tend to do, I tend to level with my audience so they're not then left going, well, sometimes on, sometimes he's no. We've discussed it all. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever, have you ever like, stopped ever coming on video now? Or would no, you ever, no, or would you no. We always on? like to keep a contact with the audience because uh -huh. the audience has come to expect it. Do you see what I mean? Well, it could be maybe another month or two. You know, it depends how all the negotiations go because these things take a bit of planning. How would that work while we, when, when we all try to phone you? How would, how would well, what we might do is the station will have a number and we might just put the station's number up and people can ring that. So will it, will it, will it be on YouTube still? Oh, yes. Well, we'll try and do that. I'll, I'll negotiate that with the big bosses and say, well, look, you know, we're, we're on the air anyway. And uh, we could just extend that because it would be good for them as well uh, to yeah. get all Scotty McClue's listeners. You know what I mean? I mean, today we're into the thousands listener wise. Wow. Now, there are many radio stations don't, don't have anything like that. But already, already we are into probably by the end of tonight, six thousand people will have experienced Scotty McClue today. Wow! Plus, is, 
plus as well in the radio stations. When you listen to radio as well, um, there's different times for for example, like the breakfast show starts from seven until until seven until nine. Then then someone takes it on from nine until twelve. That's right. But your best time for a phone in we found was uh, night times, usually ten o'clock till midnight. And uh, and very often uh, a weekend night, a Friday night, or a Saturday night, or a Sunday night, that sort of thing. And um, then also, I did phone-ins in the morning on Scott FM, and it was such a success. The other stations were going absolutely berserk, because they'd been around for 30 years, and it was damaging their business. Wow. So you might maybe do, like... To our breakfast show, like what all the all the other ones do. Do a breakfast show? Oh, like him, what Chris, like him, what Chris, Chris Evans. Chris Evans, Evans. no, that's yeah. not the best time for a phone in, you see, because no, people are getting no. to their work, so they can listen, no. but they can't necessarily no. phone. What about midday until three? Midday well, I used to do, uh, I used to do nine o'clock till midday, and that was huge. But, uh, you know, the phone calls were absolutely superb. There were so many people, but a lot of people were working. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I would say probably probably the nights are your best time for the chat. And you see, the internet gets into different habits to, say, a radio station. But the internet also, as we've discovered in the last week, uh, the internet is happy to come alive at 10 o'clock at night. Because people can listen in their bed, you see. Mm -hmm. So that's I, quite good. Um, oh, yeah. mm. I um, laughed at your um, visuals, Mum, the one, the good, um, the good um, Friday one. It's really, really funny. <laughs> Did you like that? Oh, I really did. I was <laughs> Um, to, towards the end, just on the goodbye song and all that. Ah, the goodbye song at the end of it. Absolutely. Martin, I'm going to dash you. Take great care. Top man, lovely to hear you, dinky do. Love you a lot, Scotsman. And, and you, La La, lots of love to you. There we are, that's Aaron Martin, what a character. Uh, now, what have we got here? Start your own radio station, says Dave Deprave. Uh, random pop-ups are best. A tune in the box, the weather reports, the Glen Gary, the goodbye song, says Beachy Beachy, Tom Cobra. Thank you, it's a bra brech, moonlech, nech, the nech. You've just become a top viewer, Tom Cobra. Uh, I, I need to get to read your comments. You're live on Scottish Funin. Who is that? Uh, you, oh, Glenn, how are you, La? I'm good, you? Yeah, absolutely. Busy, busy tonight. That's got you, you and Martin were having a decent chat before, aren't we? Well, we're having a good old bit of crack there, aye. And you were listening to him. You were throwing things back out there. And... I thought it was a really good conversation. Oh, well, thank you very much, Glenn. Yes, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's been an amazing week on the phone-ins, you know. Absolutely, I agree with what everybody's saying on TikTok. Just pop up spontaneously. Yeah, I think that's probably best. I mean, if anything, yeah. these nighttime ones are amazing. It makes it a little bit more... Oh, it's got his on. Yeah, oh my, there he is. And also, I think people might set the notifications and say, you know, you've got to find me. I don't want yeah. to go looking for you. Definitely, Scott. Scott, just so you know, if, well, obviously not if, when the radio phone in does come back on. Yes. Well, you'll be put, like you said, will it be more of a, the radio number will be coming up then? It'll, be like it'll it'll come phone. up along the bottom just like that one does if we can get it right. So it'll be like a studio thing from a somebody's answer, a wizard answering a phone call kind of thing to your own. Well, uh, no, it'll be probably me answering the phone. We'll have to see what we can do. If not, we'll get the wizard answering the phone and putting them through. That, that sounds pretty good, Scottish, to be honest. You know, like Wizard back on kind of thing. You know, get the wizard to the big switchboard. Uh, Remember, I don't think we'll be able to whip him though. Remember, we used to whip the wizard if he got a name wrong. You don't think you'll be able to do that anymore, Scotty, to be fair. Yeah, dance with your granny, says yeah, Ian Hills. Just do a bit of sound effects for next time, if you can. You've done what, lad? Sorry. Just do a bit of sound effects for next time, if you can. 
Just do some sound effects instead. Well, the, well, the well they were sound effects. That was what was funny. Yeah, exactly. So what, what, we yeah, used to, what we used to say was no wizards were harmed in the making yeah. of this program. Exactly. You see? <laughs> Remember, we used to shout if, if the name got wrong. We used to shout, "Do you want to whip the wizard, love?" Brilliant stuff. And, uh, and it used to be pants yeah. up and pants down. Remember, Fantastic. <laughs> all the ladies oh used God. to go, "Oh, I think pants down, Scotty." <laughs> Does it cost well, nowadays they seem to think they need to charge you if you've got a sense of humour, you know. Sometimes you can go walking in the streets and people, you say, all right, and no less. And they're like, well, I'm only being friendly. I'm only being friendly. Just having a laugh, just saying, how are you? How are you doing? Good morning, whatever. Good morning. Okay. I know. Well, you see, the Northerners are very good, but if you try it in London, they stare at you. You know, if you say, and in London used to be one of the friendliest places in the world. But, you know, if you if you say, good morning, when you're walking down the street, they still... What's he after? I don't know, you know. What's he after? What's he after, you know. Yeah, all right, love, morning. All right. I, I find when you're in the likes of Sheffield now, it's all right. Are you doing are you all right? All right. All right there, Scotty. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you just respond back. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, we're well, good, thanks. And you? And you, and you. <laughs> Think you do. Think you do. That's what it's about. Glenn, I joy to hear you. I'm going to press on, and Scott, we shall catch up a, soon. Did you get a lot of Dinky Doos then? Uh, oh, the yes. Our Yorkshire is the friendliest place in the world. We're never, yeah, we're we're never right. stopping Dinky Doos. Scotty, but Scotsmen are just as good, especially you, Scotty, anyway. You used to say, I used to hear the taxi radio, you know, that the, he would say, I'm just picking up Scotty McClure, the shout, Dinky Doo. It's like you said previously, though, um, pass it on to somebody else, and, oh, yeah, come on, if you're not heard of Scotty, there's something wrong with you. I've very seriously, something uh, wrong with them if they haven't heard of Scotty McClure. It's all 10 to 10, it's all 10 to 10, and it's like. And that's what it's all about, Glenn, you see, you get it. That's Scotty, what's marvellous. I know. What hope is that? You know, we're 30 years in June and we'll you probably only get another 30 years and that'll be it. You're preaching you pre to the choir, Sky. <laughs> it's lovely to hear you, Dinky Doo. Nice one, Sky. I love you, Sky. Love you lots, Lala. Love to you Thank and you yours. Sky. Dinky Doo. Thank what, you, what a top man, our Glenn. So there you are, guys. Lovely, lovely to hear him. Marvellous. Now, uh, Numpty, Dinky Doo, fantastic stuff. Who have we got here? What was a right old chat? They should get rid of corporate companies running train operators and bring back Great British Rail under the, the, de the Department for Transport. Could not agree with you more. Who's this here? You live with Scotty's phone in? Who's that? Hello? 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 You live with Scotty's phone in? Can you hear me? Dinky do. No, I don't think they can hear us. Poor loves. Right, not to worry. Thoughts on Monaco? Well, I don't, I think I'm a bit off staying there, to be honest with you, Angela. See who this is. You're live with Scottish phone in. Good morning. Hello. Uh, David, are you just going to your Oh, David, how are you, la? I meant to pass on your message to Pablo there. That's fine, that's what I've got, sir, of course. Okay, see, Pablo, what about you guys? Got you okay? Yeah, we've got, here's a guy asking a question. He says, is there a certain age limit for this live? Yes, you cannot phone over the age of 150. Of course, we would be dead. Uh, well, I, well, that's it, you know. Well, you, well, you would be dead He just asked if there was an age limit, and I thought, well, let's make it 150. Aye, I'll charge it. Uh, now then, Scotty, right? Pablo's a, a, a great caller. He was talking about family matters and bullying at school. Yes. So, excuse me. So, years ago, I was, I was bullied at school. Okay, right? My, my PE teacher, right? And that particular day, my teacher, PE teacher, said to my friend, my friend, I'll free you deep end of the film, uh. which he did. 
It was disgusting, right? But anyway, Billy goes on to this day. Of course. Now, now then, I we get out on our news. I won't say the news, it comes from your Scotland news. I won't say the name. You go to point to news. Port to, uh, port to well, we don't, news. we don't mention names anyway, so. I, I was Scotty, but Liga was, um, she was ignored. She put on the news stating, I'm your school. There's people getting bullied for L even LGBT and bullying for much other. And it came back on the news three weeks later. They ignored her call on the computer. And the, the PDA, the head teacher says, that is wrong. There's nothing wrong with your skill, there's no bullying. There's a lot of people's got it. Well, we, we shall see what is what. I mean, obviously, we're not going to identify anybody on here. Oh, I know, but it's discussion. It's still going on, Scotty. But anyway, I'm okay. I Do think you'll know. always get this to an extent, even in the yeah. workplace, there's a lot of so called bullying oh, yes, goes on. Son. I know, my friend, you it's know? really disgusting, but it's all getting denied, still, my friend. Well, no. nobody's going to stand up and admit to it, do you know what I mean? But then no. also, we I mustn't go it. so soft. <laughs> Hello, John. We mustn't go so soft that we can't yeah, actually yeah. produce the work, do you know what I mean? Uh, no, son. I know my friend, you know what I mean? I see, when I, when I went into an office when I left school, it was like an extension of school. And the accountant, uh, the chief accountant used to shout, you need to sort out your handwriting, son. Oh. You know, that oh, stuff. Now, you, that, that wasn't right. that wasn't bullying. That was him yeah. training me. Yeah. But people oh, nowadays oh. get a wee bit, oh, he shouted at me, and oh, he shouted. Oh, you know, oh, and you think, oh, for I mean, goodness sake, grow up. Oh, I mean, when I, when I was shouting P, 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 right? I hated P, certain P's, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Oh, I mean, a lot, you see, a lot of these instructors were trying to toughen you up because they'd been in the oh, army, you oh, know? They son, you and know they were mean, trying to toughen us up so, because they know what the world I, is I, like. I, and he's quite, quite, my PT, Mr. Hall, called me a Nancy. Do you know what I mean? He called me a Nancy, he did. But anyway, that was Ren, as she's now. Yes, know, yes. Right? Well, we don't, as I say, we don't, we don't mention any names, very important. Yeah, but very, very important, Davy, Davy, very important not to. Otherwise, we have to scrap the show. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, okay. My yeah, and, and, and I've had to speak to you about that before, and it's just for your protection and for everybody else's. We don't do second names. We don't do names of places, all that sort of stuff. We don't kind of, do you see what I mean? No, 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 that's absolutely fine. No, no, you're fine. But I'm just try, trying to get that across to you. You know, it's yes, okay. unfortunately a public platform is not just a yeah. free for all, you know. Yeah. Okay, I'm glad you're back on in the uh, Saturday, Monday, maybe Thursday. Friday, I, I think, well, we've tried the late nights and it's been a huge success. A huge success, Davy, you know, and I mean, I think that's what it's about. And we're in negotiations with uh, a very big radio station at the moment. Uh, so I think uh, I think we'll uh, see progress very soon. Are you? Yes, yes. Because you see, oh my goodness. Scotty McClure needs to be in touch with the people, and the people need uh, to be in touch with Scotty McClure. Well, I'm not, well, I can't say, uh, I can't I tell know, you because, uh, again, oh, uh, you know, oh, I'm sworn to say, okay. but it's good. All, all I'm telling you is that I think we'll, we'll find some method of getting it. We'll get it through your smart speakers. We'll get it through Alexa. Oh, we'll get oh, it. We'll I get everybody shouting, I, Alexa, I, play I, Scotty McClue on YouTube. Yes, right, always. Okay. So I'm speaking to them right now, and the negotiations oh, are quite advanced. Oh, my God. Oh, you've spoken to them. Oh, yes, okay. that's what I was trying to tell you, you see. Oh, 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 oh. So there you have it, you know, never a dull moment. How are you saying, Scott? I can't, I can't wait. Okay. So yeah. I'll, tell, but I'll tell you more as soon as I can. I know, my friend, I understand that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Lovely talking to you, and dinky you do. Love you, my friend. Love you lots, Davey. Love to John. Ta-ra-la. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
What a great character. Right, there we go. But you have to, I just had to tell Davy, you know, we don't do the second names. We don't identify things. We don't identify people. All that sort of idea. And then we can have a conversation. Kareem is the absolute master of the phone call. If you're wondering about a quality phone call, Kareem is your man. Yes. Hello, you're live with Scottish phone in. Who's that? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Who is this? Good evening, Scotty. It's uh, Dave here. Dave, lovely to hear you. Yes, lovely to hear from you, Scotty. I must say, I'm, I'm quite a new fan of yours. I've just seen you recently, and I must say, I find you very funny. Oh, well, you're very kind, Dave. That's it. That's the first time I've been called funny. Uh, I was it's that dinky do thing you say. It just, it just catches you, you know. Yo, dinky do is a massive, massive catchphrase. In fact, to be honest with you, um, I used to phone people and say to them, it's Scotty McClure, and they'd go, I, oh, now that rings a bell, wait a minute, and then they'd go, oh, dinky-doo! Dinky-doo, aye. So the dinky-doo oh, was always bigger than the Scotty McClure. Aye, so, so what's the story, Scotty? I, I, I'm guessing you're a, you're a kind of, you know, you've been a radio presenter for most of your life. Most of my life, radio, television, newspapers, the internet, all that kind of stuff. Two billion people know Scotty McClure. I see. And were you, were you on a, a radio show? Yes, um, in, yes. In late, late night radio show and mid-morning radio show on big stations. Oh, I see. Like, well, I, I haven't heard of you, but I think it was TikTok I seen you on. And I was ah, like, oh, the TikTok. Funny. The TikTok is fantastic. Yes, well, it, it, it's an okay app. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff on there, but there's a lot of good stuff. Oh, there's well. a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of nonsense, but you're going to get that anywhere. But uh, I've been, uh, uh, you know, I really have been fated on TikTok by the people. Lovely, lovely people. Exactly, Scotty, exactly. Um, quick question I want to ask you. Yes, um, go, Dave. That bothers, bothers me quite a lot. Um, yes. Do you have an opinion on the sectarian stuff that goes on in Scotland? Yes, very, very much so. Rangers? We need to cancel the sectarianism because there's no need for it. Celtic okay. Rangers are exactly the same religion. Exactly. Exactly, Scotty. You know, well, so well, there shouldn't uh, be any difference. It absolutely drives me up the wall every time I see it, and you see it every time there's an old farm game on, or every time you're around Glasgow, and it's not just Celtic and Rangers, it's all this loyalist stuff as well. It's a lot of the culture from Northern Ireland's come over to Glasgow. I mean, I, I'm, I live on the East Coast, so I'm not, you know, we don't get bothered by it, but it just, you know, pisses me off when I see the see what goes on there, and it's just, it's so pathetic and so unjust for Right, well, here's what I've been saying, and you can tell me what you think about it. Uh, we can start off by saying if you're going to an old firm game, you have to go with a buddy from the other team. So if you're a Rangers man, you have to take a Celtic man in with you. Oh, really? Right, yep. Absolutely. That's what you should have. And they all stand together. You don't have separate ends. So if you've got a big poster, then you could have a Rangers guy holding one end and a Celtic guy holding the other. I think they should all sing each other's songs at the top of their voices. So I think the whole ground should sing the Fields of Athen Rye, or the whole ground should sing God Save the Queen, or whatever. And now, these are just rough examples. And uh, I also think that there should be a lot of, uh, you know, dancing and partying together. If you're found fighting at football, you get banned for life from going to the games, and you should also be jailed for a long time because that's Scotland's shame. And exactly. if, if, so, if yeah, none of that so works, shame. if none of that works, scrap the two teams and have Glasgow United. Oh, well, Glasgow United, now that's an idea. Well, Scotty, it's a very a very colourful idea you've got there. Um, I, I think, to be honest, it would, it would be nice to see, but I just don't see that happening. It's, it's too... It's too opposing. The, the, well, it doesn't. Teams. It doesn't matter if you go to my TikTok videos. You'll see me talking about it on there. There's one we just did. A, it's only a few seconds, and I think the last time I looked, nearly nineteen thousand people had had a look at it. Uh, well, I well, as I say, I'll have to check that out. My my problem with it all. I mean, see, I, I do I do support Celtic, um, but I'm completely unbiased when it comes to the mon the, the hoops I, we I, say, and we are the people. Yeah, I, I guarantee. If I was a Rangers fan, I would feel the exact same way. 
see, I, I do have a massive... I mean, I, I've still got plenty of trouble with what, what Celtic fans do. When you, when you hear Celtic fans talking about the IRA, you know, people have got nothing to do with Ireland. Nothing to do with it. football. Nothing exactly. to do with exactly. football. It's nothing to do with football, but that doesn't stop people. And yeah. it, it well, they need to learn fun. to not be doing that. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But I see, to be honest, myself, I see a lot worse from the Ranger side. And I, a lot. Of, you know, people say they're just as bad as each other. But as far as I'm concerned, they're not. As far well, as what concerned. we might do, here's another suggestion I had, that we ask Her Majesty the Queen in her 70th year of her reign to, uh, you know, grant the prefix royal to both Rangers and Celtic. So you have the Royal Rangers and the Royal Celtic. Aye, uh, but that wouldn't fit with the Celtic because uh, the Celtic are Republicans. Hey, listen, lot. listen, Dave, never mind that that wouldn't fit. That's what your problem, your sectarianism doesn't fit. So we have to take action to make it fit. Well, I don't, I just don't think, the problem is, I mean, as, as you're saying, it's definitely, it's nothing to do with Scotland, it's nothing to do with football, completely no. agreed. The problem is, it, it's just gone too far. The Rangers, the problem is, I, the problem I have is with Rangers, because the whole, they've got Protestant, I, I understand their club was founded by Protestants, um, and therefore, yeah, but uh, that's nothing to do with the club was founded by Christians, and so was Celtic. So they should both I be their, their their brethren. But people are so small minded. Ah, they, now they, you're they, getting they, down to it's the small mindedness. Religion has never ever ever caused a problem. What causes a problem is a lack of knowledge and understanding of religion. Oh, exactly. And see these people, see these people on the ranger side, on the, on the loyalist side, they don't have a clue what they're talking about. I, I'm a big history fan, me, and I could tell you all about the Battle of the Boyne and William of Orange. Well, you all know that, that, that King Billy was a very, very bad man. Well, he was. I mean, he started, look at it. He, was, he had no right to the throne. He was a Protestant, so the English people... Well, no, that's not, that's not, well, no, he didn't actually, he was invited because his wife was oh, the daughter the of the Catholic daughter. James II, and he was invited so that you could move from, con from um, absolute monarchy to constitutional monarchy. He was, I mean, I understand that to an extent because, the, uh, uh, to be honest, the majority of the British Isles or the majority of Great Britain certainly welcomed him, just the Catholics didn't. But let's jump a little bit further, go back to go over to Queen Anne when she died. It was an absolute abomination because they gave the throne to King George the First, who was a German who didn't even speak English, and he was distant cousin to Queen Anne. Her own brother was the most direct heir. The Hanoverians, yeah, Catholic. but Queen Anne, Queen Anne was a baddie as well, although she was a Stuart. She was the one that forced us into union. Well, yes, I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a staunch supporter of, of you know, the, the Jacobites, um, and I definitely would have fought for them if I was alive back in the day, because it was the rightful cause. Dave, uh, I'm going to have to dash, but this is a quality call. Uh, well, maybe I'll call you another time, Scott, you, and we can delve into it. You'd better. I look forward to Loved talking to you. And dinky-do. Dinky-do. <laughs> there we are. That's Dave. What a fantastic call. Amazing. Absolutely interesting. There'd be civil war if Celtic were named Royal. Oh, the Rangers. Uh, on the tonic wine tonight, big man. Are you? Well, not too much of it. It's Sharon from Koboki again. Love you, Scotty. Think you do. How much longer is this live? About two more minutes, Ewan, and then we're going to have to dash off. But uh, what a fantastic show tonight, guys. Woo! Amazing. Wonderful. Spread the word and uh, get following me on Twitch and on YouTube. And, uh, of course, get following on the old TikTok here. Um, make them all wear the same colors in the stadium. That removes the difference. Yes. But what colours should we have? Do you wear a ranger strip or a Celtic strip? Or, or do we just get different colours altogether? And that's for Scottish old firm colours. So you can't actually have your rangers colours and you can't have your Celtic colours. That might be, a, that's a very, very good idea because we need to stop the fighting. Give them a lifetime ban. Hello, mate. Hello, famous egg. Uh, Castle Grey Skull wasn't singing we are the people after the last old firm hey scottish eddie boy 
Can you stay on for longer, please? Yon, it would be wonderful. But I'm going to have to dash. We're going to have to say good night to the TikTokers. Guys, love you lots. Set your notifications because we'll be popping up live again soon. Dinky doo. There we are. That's our beautiful TikTokers have had to go. Oh, my goodness. There we are. That's it. What a shame. We love our TikTokers on here. And to the rest of us, to the Facebookers, and to the YouTubers, and to the Twitchers, thank you so much for joining us tonight. What a fantastic program. This is Scotty McClue saying dinky-doo to every single one of you. ta -ra -las. <laughs>